Good morning. It is the 29th of November, and this morning is the first Sunday in Advent, and we begin what will be a four-week journey together from here to Bethlehem. And so we begin. The heavens are trembling with anticipation. And we all wait for Jesus. The nights are long and the days are short. And we all wait for Jesus. Our redemption is drawing near. And we all wait for Jesus. Let us pray. Let us live in hope and worship as people ready to see the salvation of our God. Creator God, you made the heavens and the earth. You set the planets in their courses, lit the sun with fire, caused the stars to shine and the world to turn. Life springs up wherever your breath moves. In Jesus Christ, you brought hope into a world full of fear and despair. You sent your spirit to enliven our hope and guide us on the way. We are waiting now in anxious times for the world to be made new. We wait for new life and we wait with deep hope. And let us now confess our sin against God and our neighbors as together we say, redeeming God. We confess that waiting is difficult for us. We want to be comfortable in this festive season, but the pandemic keeps us anxious and unhappy. We complain about our own troubles and close our eyes to the suffering of others. Forgive us for ignoring truths we do not want to see. Forgive us for seeking our own comfort at the cost of others. Give us eyes to perceive the great need within our community. Give us eyes to see the deep need within our own lives. Turn our hearts to you again and again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the collect for the first Sunday of Advent. God of unveiled truth, in times of darkened sun and waning moon, lift up our hearts and waken our love to announce the coming dawn of unexpected peace through Jesus Christ, the one who is to come. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name, or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider we are all your people. The word of the Lord. 
Now we say the new Jerusalem. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Though night still covers the earth and darkness covers the nations, over you will the Lord arise. Over you will his glory appear. Nations will stream to your light and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will always be open. Day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will name your walls salvation. You will call your gates praise. No longer will the sun be your light by day. No longer the moon give you light by night. The Lord will be your eternal light. Your God will be your glory. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson, as soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The word of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, the, uh, the season of Advent has begun, and for much of society, that means a sprint to Bethlehem. Uh, from the time Halloween was over, uh, stores were decorating for Christmas. Already, Christmas carols are playing on the radio, and Christmas specials are coming to a television station near you. But for the church, we take a bit of a different approach. This day, this season of Advent does not begin with unbridled joy. It does not begin with happy anticipation of the birth of a child. It begins with lament. It begins with the pain of a nation. Listen, listen to the words of the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. For Isaiah, for Isaiah and for the people of Israel, heaven was the place 
where Yahweh resided. Heaven was the place where the kingdom of God was. And earth was the place where Jerusalem was. Earth was the place where need was. Everything was just fine in heaven. It's on earth that things were falling apart. And for Isaiah and for the people of Israel, things were collapsing. There was anguish, there was despair, there was incredible pain. And so Isaiah cries out, oh, that you would tear open the heavens. I mean, surely, surely the God who brought Israel out of Egypt, surely the God who brought them together at Sinai and made them his own people, surely the God that had performed extraordinary deeds in the past, awesome, powerful deeds, could do something awesome now because God knows they needed something awesome. Isaiah's lament is a prayer. It is a prayer that is born from brokenness and a prayer from a sense of abandonment, of being abandoned by the God who had said to them, you will be my people and I will be your God. And Isaiah is saying to him here today, but where are you? For God's sake, where are you? We need you. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. Who among us has not said something very, very similar to that? I mean, really. Think of, of the past year that we have lived through. We have lived through pandemic, the greatest threat to the health of humanity in the last hundred years. We have lived through isolation and feeling like we were in exile in our own homes. We have come face to face with our own mortality, particularly for people in my age group. We have lived with the fear of dying. We have watched this pandemic take an unbelievable toll on small businesses and the financial prospects for individuals and families. And now, now as the numbers of infected people in the so-called second wave go up, we begin to anticipate Christmas in isolation and lockdown again begins to feel like a very real possibility. Many parts of our world, parts of our country, parts of our province, they're already there. And as a result, pandemic fatigue has taken hold of us and, and that means that it feels as if the world that we know is slipping through our fingers. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. Enough is enough. And, and, and for those of us who live with anxiety and depression, the past 12 months have been terrible. Isolation, uncertainty, a lack of control. These are incredibly powerful triggers that can lead to spirals into darkness and pain and fear. Doctors everywhere have been absolutely overwhelmed by people coming to them looking for prescriptions to help them deal with anxiety, with depression. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens, and come down. Enough, it is enough. 
And now, as, as we begin to move towards Christmas, we know that this time of year, at the best of times, is incredibly challenging for many, many people because it is a time of year which is a powerful reminder of grief and loss and separation and heartache. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. God, where are you? We need you. Well, this season of Advent may begin with lament. It may begin with anguish. But Isaiah, Isaiah will not let us stay there. Listen, listen to what the prophet says. And these three little words, but they're so important. Yet, O oh Lord, which can also be translated, but now, O oh Lord. Yet, O oh Lord, those words are for Isaiah in his prayer, in his poetry, in his proclamation. They are a shift, a fundamental shift from lament to trust, from despair to hope. You see, for Isaiah, for Isaiah, whatever we are experiencing, whatever holds us in its grip, now, now is an opportunity for God's newness. What we are experiencing does not need to control us or define our lives. Now is an opportunity for new possibilities. Yet, yet, but now, O oh Lord. And, and then he goes on and he gives a, a couple of images which are powerful and, and hope-filled. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. And, and I know that for some people that image of Father can be problematic. But it is not an image which Isaiah uses to talk about a father who is either absent or abusive, but rather a father who is present and nurturing and caring and loving and supportive. And then he gives the extraordinary image of the potter. Now, most of us I know have, have seen potters at work. And when potters are doing their art, there is an incredible connection between the potter and the clay. It is as if the potter and the clay are one. And as the wheel turns and they're holding the clay in their hands, often they'll close their eyes and their body will, will move as they're going about the task that they're doing. And it's intimate and it's beautiful and, and it's lovely. And at the end, when it's done, each piece that the potter turns out is unique, and is an extension of the potter. And I believe that that's what Isaiah is saying we are meant to be. We are all meant to be a unique work that is a unique expression of God. But for that to happen, for that to happen, we need to trust. We need to trust that the potter is still holding us in his hands. We need to trust that the potter is still shaping us, forming us, making us into what we will be. And we cannot get caught in, live in, or get stuck in negativity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. You are our potter and we are the clay. I, I've got to say that's a bit of a challenge 
for me and I think many in, in our society to not get stuck in negativity. And a huge part of that, and I'll admit it, I am addicted to my devices. I mean, I am never beyond arm's length from my iPad or, or from my, my iPhone. And what that means is that 24 hours a day, every time there is a crisis, every time there is breaking news, every time there is something happens, every time anything negative happens in the world, I get dinged and I read about it and it keeps me awake at night. And it keeps me awake at night because while I am able to see the pain and the suffering and the hurt and the problems in the world right in my hands, I am not good at all at seeing the beauty and the goodness and the love and the wonderful things that are going on all around me every day. I miss them. And for as much as I have a strong faith, and at this point in my life, my faith is stronger than it ever has been, I am not good at seeing God's presence, which is all around me. I am not good at seeing the presence of the one who is here to hold me and to shape me and to mold me. Listen, listen again to the words of Isaiah because my problem, and, and I can take some consolation with the fact that I'm not alone in that, that just puts me in line with the history of the people of God. And Isaiah knew that. And listen to what he said to them. Arise, shine, for your light has come. It's already come. He's not saying it's going to come someday. Arise, shine, your light has come. And, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you, has already risen upon you. And then he says to them, lift up your eyes and look around. Look around to see the goodness of God. Look around to see what God is already doing in and around you. Look around. And, and again, he says, immediately after the passage that we heard today, th this is God talking to the people who said that they hadn't seen him, they couldn't see him, wondering where in the world he was. God says, I was ready to be sought out. I said, here I am, here I am. I held out my hands to you all day long, all day long. This season of Advent, I believe is critically important. We must not rush to Bethlehem. This, this season is an invitation for us to trust. It is an invitation for us to live with hope. To live with hope for us as individuals, to live with hope for the world that we live in. To live in the hope that our God, our potter is not finished with us, but that he holds us in his hands and continues to shape us and mold us to make us what we're meant to be. And this season of Advent is an invitation to us in the midst of the busyness and the craziness, in the midst of the rubble which is all around us, to stop and lift up our eyes and look. To look for the wonder and the beauty and the love which is too easy to miss, to look for God's presence in and around us, day after day. Because as much as we might be tempted to say with Isaiah, why don't you just rend the heavens and come down? Advent says to us, God is already here, has always been here. You are not alone, not now, 
not ever. So live with hope. Live with hope. Let all God's children say, Amen. And now we affirm our faith in the words of Hear, O Israel, as together we say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Merciful God, the signs of our times are worrisome. We gather in your presence, aware that the earth groans in pain and many people are suspicious of each other. We thank you for your comforting presence in times of suffering and uncertainty and for your promise of life beyond death and hope beyond fear. As the longest night of this year draws nearer, comfort those who dread the darkness and direct those who have lost their way. Wherever people are overwhelmed by the demands of this season and the complications of COVID-19, let them hear your still small voice within all the clamor and confusion and catch a glimpse of your light shining in the night. Lord, in your love, Hear our prayer. prayer. God of all our days and nights, we remember that the days leading up to Christmas are difficult for many, especially this year. We pray for those who are hungry and cold. Alert us to the ways that we can set a feast for those in our community and beyond whose cupboards are bare. Warm them in your love. We pray for those who are grieving. Make us patient and compassionate companions to those in mourning, even when we're not sure what to say. Fill emptiness with your comfort. Lord, in your love, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We remember those who are feeling very isolated this year. Inspire our hearts with ideas of how to reach out in friendship. Bring hope to the lonely with your friendship. Lord, in your love, Hear our prayer. We pray for those who feel like their world is ending, whose lives have been uprooted by fire, flood, or storm, illness, job loss, or death. Steady us amid the upheavals of this year of pandemic and remind us that you alone are constant. Your steadfast love will see us through. Heaven and earth may pass away, but you are the source of everlasting life and undiminished hope. Help us trust in you, no matter what is happening. Lord, in your love, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
We pray for Todd, our bishop, and all bishops and clergy who are working creatively to maintain the church in our current challenging situation. We continue to pray for your selection committee each day as they go about the very challenging task of finding a new priest who will lead St. George's boldly into the future. We pray for our wardens and parish council as they work to maintain the life and ministry of this parish family. We pray for one another as we continue to navigate uncharted territory in our church, our community, and our personal lives as we struggle to de defeat COVID-19. Lord, in your love, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Grant these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Go now, strengthened by the witness of Christ. Keep alert and wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Continue to do what is right and remember God in your ways. And may God enrich you in speech and knowledge of every kind, May Jesus Christ strengthen you to the end and may the Holy Spirit guide you in faithful living until he comes in glory. Amen. Amen.